Welcome to the Women in Business radio show with Sean Murphy, connecting women in business around the globe. Hello and welcome into the Women in Business Radio Show studio. We are here. Well, I say we are better because I keep getting into trouble for not. <laughs> Introduce my co-host. Hello, Adele. Hello. Adele Martin, Hi. from exec- who is the executive midlife coach specialising in business women who have menopause. Absolutely. I'm Shar Murphy. I host the Women in Business Radio <laughs> Show and I really, really wish I could tell you what I do. I run events, you don't do. I? Do. I run, I run, I run events. Events. That's it really. I run events for women. I run the Women in Business Big Show, which is on August the 25th. And both everybody in the studio today, apart from me, who's going to be wafting professionally, is what I do, will be speaking or doing something at that event, which is in Longfield in Kent. I've done that now, haven't I? What yeah. are we going to talk about now? You can <laughs> listen to the radio show on. Would you like to do a shout oh. out? If you would like to listen to us, Adele, tell them where, how they can, oh, right. how can they connect with the show and how can they listen to us and how can they become one of those people we've set okay. up thing. So you can listen to us on Spotify, on Audible, on Alexa, and we've worked that out, on Apple Podcasts and Spreaker. And become a supporter if you go on to the Women in Business Radio Show dot com. Then there's a, an element there where you can join and uh, support us for five dollars, which is about four pounds. Isn't yeah, it? Yeah, come on, you know yeah, it's not much. I will tell you what, it's not even a glass of wine. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. Yeah, it's not even a glass of wine. Oh. Several of you will have to club together. <laughs> <laughs> to, just to get me a glass of wine and a packet of cheese and onion crisps it's not much to ask is it no, really is it not. no and you can connect with us on twitter through web radio live instagram which is the women in business radio show and facebook and linkedin the women in business radio show and we are of course i mean this is mm. this is recorded live although it's although it's turned into a podcast you might just in case you were wondering how slick it was we don't edit this no, don't. there's oh. no editing you can <laughs> 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 who who knew? <laughs> I'm sure, I bet I bet they're gasping with surprise out there. Um, but you can actually, if you listen, if you wanted to listen to us even liver, um, even live, <laughs> even liver, the link for liver, right? yeah, even liver. Then we are on channelradio.co.uk forward slash two. I think if you go onto that, that's T W O. If you go onto that, you will find the Women in Business Radio Show, and you can listen to us live between eleven and one on Thursday. But also, there are recordings of the show. Um, I don't know; they go out at various times. It'll tell you on there, but you can listen to us here as well. Okay, so what's happening? Well, we have got Gemma Fairclough Haynes back in the studio again. From uh, she's 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 now been on here this is her second go this year isn't it Gemma yeah welcome so Gemma is founder of Orchard Employment Law she's an employment law specialist she is a businesswoman herself and she works with lots and lots of business women and is the perfect guest to discuss our topic today our topic today is I've got far too much to do. <laughs> so this, if you're listening in, okay, I've got so much to do. I, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Adele, Adele seems to have it all together. She's, um, but I'm sure it's just a front. Um, Gemma, Gemma, people tell you that this is the perfect topic for you. Yeah, so anyone that I said to, oh, I'm doing, like I said to my daughter, she said, what's the topic? I said, I've got too much to do. And she went, <laughs> I went, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. And Jess, and she went, just tell them what you've been doing for the last month. <laughs> I, I, shall I tell you what I find disconcerting? I, In fact, this week I have been absolutely manic, but I, I, I've not achieved anything. If you, if you looked at my little pile of stuff that's done, it's almost empty, okay? <laughs> if you look at my inputs pile, which is how much time I've sat in front of the keyboard, running stuff off, running around, printing stuff, not printing stuff, throwing it on the floor, having to do it again... <laughs> Um, inputs massive, outputs bleh. outcomes none, oh. <laughs> none. Okay, and I reckon it's because I've had over the last couple of weeks, I've had a few people make comments to me like, "I don't know how you do it. How do you manage to fit all of this in? How how do you do it all? <laughs> oh, I don't know. How do you run all of those events? Oh, I need. Oh, goodness me, I don't know how you manage." And I'm starting, to, I'm, I'm starting to take it on board. You know, I'm thinking, no, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't know how I manage, actually. 
<laughs> so lesson one, don't listen to other people. Um, so I've got too much to do. As I was talking to people about this, actually saying, oh, do you know, I think we'll run a show about I've got too much to do. I was sort of getting exactly the same response as you, as you got from your daughter. People going, oh, tell me about it. <laughs> and it's, I don't know, it's almost like... Um, I don't, I don't like can I use the word epidemic yeah, <laughs> is that, yeah. is that allowed yeah. but it's it, it's almost it's a theme at the moment isn't it I think it's a business owner thing as well like, mm. I think it is that like because we have the freedom and creativity to do other things yeah. we then just want to do it all mm. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah yeah okay I'll tell you what this is very unlike me, but let's see if we can sort of narrow it down to a few key issues. So we we want we want to do it all because we can. Yeah. Um, because we're not employed. Yeah. We don't have anybody taking us back and going, "That's not in your job description." Right. Exactly. And there's no they haven't got those same boundaries of say. Mm. Nine till five or eight till four or mm-hmm. whatever. So you, you know, you we got... don't have time off. Yeah, no. we, I mean, we're we, unless we make it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Do you, do you know? And do you know? Funnily enough, I was talking. I was talking to somebody, and I said to him, "Do you want to come down onto the radio show?" And he went, "I can't because it's a bank holiday." I'm like, huh? Huh? <laughs> and it was like, do not compute. <laughs> And, and at first, number one, I didn't know it was a bank holiday. <laughs> this is the first thing. I had no idea it was a bank holiday. And the second thing, well, what's that got to do with anything? Yeah. <laughs> Are you a bank? Yes. <laughs> I just think, I don't know, how, how, how's that relevant? But it is, isn't it? It is. You know, everybody who's employed has got today off. Mm, yeah. As we know this yeah. morning. As we know this morning we arrived, the offices were closed. <laughs> we couldn't get into the studio because the office building that the studio is housed in yeah. was shut. Mm-hmm. And at first I'm like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but it's Thursday. We always do the show on Thursday. It's Thursday, show day, therefore it's Thursday, therefore the office is open. But it was closed. Mm. And yeah, okay. So we we don't have we don't have we don't have employment boundaries, do we? No. Okay, so I'm just writing this down. A few key points. <laughs> this is why when anyone asks yeah. you why who got yeah. this, <laughs> we, we <laughs> don't have. No, it's, I'm writing it down so that we can make some points as yeah. we go. We don't have employment boundaries. Yeah, but we also have more opportunities. Oh no, I didn't. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. not. Um, yeah. It's that we can. It comes back to it before comes, yeah. because because we're business owners, we can actually do what we want. The, yeah. the, the you know the only job description I have is the one that I write myself. Exactly. And I will tell you what, it's very weak. <laughs> <laughs> so do do lots of stuff. <laughs> do do a lot of that <laughs> until you can't. Yeah. <laughs> so nobody tells us what to do. No. No. Um. So, is there another reason why we've all got too much to do? Yeah, yeah. So, so, go on. so I suppose for me, um, two things this week that's probably made it too much to do was one, you meet somebody with network and you have a call. Do you want to collaborate? Do you want to do something together? So, all of a sudden, you've added something to your to-do list. And then also, a client says, oh, can you do this or can we move this? So, I call it clients uh, like creep. So, you, you've got something, a client asking for something that's probably over and above what you've offered. So, again, you end up in a situation where you've got too, too much to do because perhaps you're bending backwards for a client that, that you shouldn't mm. have done. Mm. And you just do it. And so, for me, I've just found that the last week. And I sat back and Dave thought, it's always way. We, we come up with a topic and then I'm working that through. I thought, why? Well, I didn't do what I needed to do. Mm. Well, I had a call with somebody who said, do you want to collaborate? okay and then some client stuff that got a bit shifted and i ended up not doing what i I needed to do Mm. um i put down no wiggle room yeah Mm. there's nothing built in for for there's no contingency for Mm. unexpected stuff so this week we had a stone go through the windscreen and it's actually sort of not as easy as it used to be to just get it booked in and sorted out. And it may not sound like much, but that probably took about two to three hours of disjointed phone calls and doing time. stuff just to, just mm. to get it sorted. But there wasn't any room for it. There wasn't any wiggle room apart from taking, you know, a, a, well, there wasn't any, no. really. There was no space left to do that. Mm. So I think, yeah, having too tight a diary. Mm. 
Yeah, I, I've given up diary management because <laughs> I'm not very good at it. And I do things like someone will go, can you talk here and can you talk there? And I go, oh, yeah, that's 11 till 1 and that one's one thirty till 2. <laughs> yeah, that's and no then, problem. One's in Birmingham, and then, one's in London. London. Like, yeah, one's in Glasgow. <laughs> one's in... <laughs> you've not allowed yourself even time to use the toilet. Like, you've yeah. not even... I'm terrible at that. So I've literally passed it on. And now when people go, oh, can we have a meeting? I go, honestly, oh, no, I'm not being like conceited, but I've just passed that on to somebody else. So... Ask her. Mm. <laughs> because yeah. I'm not very good at it. Yeah. So poor poor diary management, which is also a bit of the wiggle room. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. I'm a bit of a control freak about diary stuff and I'm really not sure if that's something I want to pass on. But but everybody has their own thing that they don't yeah. want that they don't want to pass on. And to be fair, it's probably because a lot of it is in my head. It's not properly recorded in my diary. So perhaps if somebody else took it over, they would actually record what needed to be done. I think I get like that every now and then, which is why I then creep mm. into taking it back and it goes horribly wrong. And then I remember, yeah. oh yeah, that's why you don't do that. Yeah, yeah and you put it back. <laughs> so. so why else have we got too much to do? So for me, I think sometimes we said... We're going to do, do something It's going to take an hour and it actually takes longer. I always say to people, when, when you can put time in the diary to do something creative, it's probably going to take a lot longer, writing, yeah. etc. So for me, it's, again, it's just I'd rather put extra time in it and have that time back. Mm. Mm. Underestimate. Uh, yeah. I, I, don't you find, though, because the, the, the other side of that is time, is the job always expands to fit the time available? Mm. In my experience, it's, it's normally been the other way around. So, so for me, and but when you but when you're starting out, you try new tasks. I suppose I'm now better at understanding, and also when. So there is no point on this earth me doing anything after twelve o'clock, as in mm. as in that creativity. If my I've worked my diary around when my energy is, and I've learned like circadian rhythm, I've had to. Mm-hmm. So I know that I say to people, look, I can't, if I can't do it in that morning, it really doesn't get done because then the afternoon I do less um, less brain taxing creative stuff. So I suppose the biggest thing I learned just to help myself was to make sure that I work within my circadian rhythm where my energy is. Okay. Otherwise, I struggled a bit. So, mm. I'm going to suggest actually just a, perhaps a slightly different approach because for me, mm. so it might say a different approach, but perhaps approach for me, I find that that if I allow an hour and a half for something, it mm. sort of will take an hour and a half. Mm. And this is this is just mind juggling, really, isn't it? But if I said, OK, I'm going to that's 45 minutes to do that. But my next whatever it is doesn't start f- until 45 <laughs> minutes after that. So I've got a 45 minute break. Mm. That for me, I think, would work a little bit better yep. because I've got 45 minutes to do it mm. and I need to get it done in that 45 minutes. And then there's this break, which I can either do something else in or have some lunch or, or, or yeah. do another job. Mm. Um, I think sometimes it's perception. Yeah. Yep. I think well, our perception. Yeah our, yeah, our perception that we actually have too much to do. If you keep saying I've got too much to do, yes. guess what? So you, you do actually have too, have too much, much to do. do. No, I've got too much to do. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, right. So, actually, right. I think, I think then, because this is something that that I I haven't done it because I haven't had the time. But too much to do. But um, yeah, because I've got too much to do. But actually, I'm going to. So, I'm using the example of the Women in Business Big Show. And this isn't actually just about my time. It's about time in general. So we've got 20 speakers. We've got various things that need to happen before the event. We've got potentially over 100 exhibitors. And there are certain things that need to happen for each one of those. And it's to sit down and go, okay, how long is it going to take to put together the images for each of those people? How long is it going to take to schedule them, to put them out, to liaise with that person? So actually looking at it as an individual thing and go, I've never done this before, by the way. I just normally, I just race on and get it and wonder wonder why we're all on the floor. And say, well, okay, well, for every person who's in that particular role, would be they an exhibitor, a speaker or a sponsor, 
there there is an hour two hours however many hours of if like processing time around that that has to happen for each of those particular things and if we want each of those people if we want 20 of those and 150 of those and however many of those that is this amount of hours mm. forget about everything else that has to happen to run the event and everything else that has to happen around that just a process if you like and let's it is processing isn't it mm. just a process that many of let's call them clients that many people that's how long that's going to take I think the problem is we don't just do one thing like you know if that's if that's all you did and I don't mean that to No 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 if, no if that's if if you just did the women business big show which I know is big then maybe that would be fine but that's not all you do but it's no but it, no <laughs> but at least that is a starting point and I think that's the problem is that at no point so I've got the radio show I've got the monthly events I've mm. got the the annual events mm-hmm. Um, and I've got other. I've got a business program coming out as Adele. You know, Adele and I are sort of doing various bits and pieces. Yeah. I've got a mastermind program coming out and a business thing coming out. So it's to, to actually sit down and look at each of those and see actually what has to happen every day with each one of those. Because some of those things, something has to happen every day. Some of them, everything, something has to happen every week. And some of them, something has to happen every month. And to actually look at everything as a project and pull all of those together. And then I reckon, I reckon if you do that, you can actually go, hmm, there's this many hours in a week and I've looked at this lot here mm. and actually there's, there's more, more hours. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> what you've just described is at least four full-time jobs. <laughs> <laughs> you see, this is not helping. Okay? I want you to... Do you remember, <laughs> do you remember, do you remember I, what I was saying? Yeah. About, in actual, but I think it's okay. Actually, actually, it's okay. I'm, I actually what I'm going to say now is, because I, I desperately need to pull this back from I've got too much to do to actually I can manage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but in actual fact, a lot of this is doubling up. Okay. A lot of a lot of, and I th- I think this is actually one way of looking at it is a, an awful lot of stuff is doubling up. So the people that are speaking and exhibiting on the radio show, those systems and those people also inter- it, at the big show also interact with the systems for the radio show and all of that sort of thing. And, and actually there's like one system, it's just divided up into lots of different places. The problem is actually not knowing whether you actually have too much to do and it's just what things drop off the end. Mm. Does that... Does that does that make if you don't sit down and go actually okay if I want if I want a hundred exhibitors each one of them has to, each one of them is paying this amount of money and each one of them needs this amount of time to process if you don't end up with some sort of figure go actually if I want a hundred exhibitors and it's going to be two hundred hours on top of the day that they're there by the time I've booked them in invoiced them collected that oh. done their promotion and all of that sort of thing and liaised with them. How's you know how's that all that going to get done? You know how how is that two hundred hours going to fit in and be paid? You know who's going to do that work and how's it going to be paid for? You you don't actually know. All it is is like I've got too much to do, mm. and I may have too much to do. But you don't know unless you sit down. But you don't yeah. know. I think unless yeah. until until you sit down yeah. and actually look at that. Shall I tell you what helped me when I, when I'm doing well, <laughs> which is not all the time, but it happens from time to when time. When you're doing well, doing well at not at managing all. the I things was going to say, what do you mean by yeah, well? Doing okay. well at managing all the things I have to okay. do, which is not all the time, but it happens for a period. Are you sure? Sh- are you sure you haven't just forgotten something? <laughs> <laughs> no. So when I'm doing that, lists really help me. I know everyone's um. not a fan of a list, but I find I'm mm. starting in the morning with okay, these are my priorities. Because I can get sidetracked with yeah. all these other little bits. The, I'm going to do these five things today. And then if I've got room, I'll do those mm. other bits. That really helps me yeah. as opposed to spinning around on my chair. I didn't know you had a camera in my office. <laughs> <laughs> but it, that, that really does help if I have a plan, mm. which is what you're saying really, isn't it? And the I, way you do it is a different I, way. Actually, different way. well, I, actually... I think what I'm saying is that that there is more than one plan yeah. so that there is a plan for the day but that actually you have a much bigger plan mm. so that you know that for this particular project f- and I think you can divide projects up into times so you know if say so for you 
perhaps Gemma, it's clients and what happens monthly with, with those clients. So how much time actually has to be delivered for each client? And it could be different for each client as well. So how much time actually has to be delivered by the time you've added on all of the admin and everything? It's like a full process of dealing with 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 a certain aspect of it. So for me, it's an exhibitor. You know, from start to finish, how much time is involved in processing just that one exhibitor application and so that that puts it into that makes it big and then when you come down to your day okay what do I have to do today yeah I think the thing is if I was just doing my day job I'd be fine but I'm I'm not just doing my day and that's where I come unstuck and I see a lot of people because we're not you know restrained by time in the same way yeah Yeah. so for me I, I, you know, obviously I run Orchard Employment Law, which means I do some of the do, but also I manage stuff and look at the mm. books and whatever. I could do all of that, I think, mm. you know, standing on my head and have lots of time. But then I forget, oh, yeah, I do speaking. Mm. Oh, yeah, I'm a mm. school governor. Oh, yeah, I do. So it's all those other things yeah. that you do that then okay. become so we're talk- that. So we're talking about multiple projects now. Yeah. I'm going to ask a question here, which I don't actually know the answer to, but I have loads <laughs> and loads of projects. Um Is the issue the amount of time collectively that they all take, or is it that there's lots of them, lots of lots Lots of of lots of projects? And if you were to take that time and focus it on one project, it's actually quite doable. You know, you'd bolt on a few more hours, and it's the same thing, and you're doing it. So, what is it? Is it the number of hours, or is it the different projects are switching? Different projects. I think for me. That's what it is. Mm. So I've had to say no to a few projects recently, yeah. which is it's a learning curve as well because, you know, you're just putting on different hats, aren't you? You're tra- switching your train of thought to mm. think about something and then the switching back. Even that's an adjustment. It is, yes. It is. And I'm now looking at, and I'm not doing very well, I have to say, but I'm looking at focus blocks of time. So I'm saying, OK, you know, for the next two hours, I'm focusing on the Women in Business radio show and I'm doing this. The reason that doesn't work particularly well for me is that very often things are interconnected. Mm. So I've got somebody who's a guest on the radio show who's also a speaker or they're an exhibitor or they're involved at another event or, or another project. And so I end up sort of um, sort of going into different platforms and doing different things. But working in, in blocks, I find. Yeah, that does help. That, mm. that does help. And blocking out time. <laughs> the other day, I lost. I forgot my phone at home, which I thought was the end of the world. But I, got, I was so productive. I was like, this is actually a good thing. Because I realise mm. the amount of times that I look at my phone, yeah. again, is just like another distraction. Yeah, I get phones. Um, I now have my phone on, fo- on focus, mm. so it doesn't ring. Mm. I have particular times. So I've used Zoho. Is it Bookly? Mm. Zoho yeah. Bookly. Mm. So now, instead of, I'm not saying this happens all the time, but instead of just going, oh, yeah, now give me a ring. And then having my time interrupted by somebody giving me a ring, I have a link. um, So it's like Calendly. I have a booking link where you can book a time and I've decided when that time is. Absolutely. And it integrates with my calendar and I've set it at a 15 minute. um, It's a 15 minute slot so that that gives not necessarily the person, but also me because I'm a great one for for making suggestions and sending people off to look at different things and how can I help. Um, so that is, this is a 15 minute conversation mm-hmm. and they plan accordingly and I plan accordingly. Mm-hmm. So I have times when there are, when there's, if, what should we say, disrupted, interrupted work where I'm doing bits and pieces and I, I find that works. Yeah. Um, and having a having a break. So I found I'm terrible yeah. at not having. I mean, not just breaks in the day. I mean, not having a break for weeks and months on end. Um, and then I just become less and less productive. And and you know you have a, and a break doesn't have to be long. It might be one day, two days. I come back. I'm like, oh, I did that really quickly. So that's yeah. Uh, I think you do. You get slower and slower, don't you? Yeah. Yes, you're you're abs- you're absolutely right. Um, Adele, you said 
um, well, I've written it down as doing the wrong thing at the wrong time, but I'm not sure if that's right. I think it's doing something at the right time so that you, you're you working with your circadian rhythms yes. yep. and creativity at particular times. Yeah, absolutely, because we're all, all very different. And I worked out that, for me, doing routine admin um, and calls, like you said, like the, the, the short calls in the afternoon is great. But if I want to get some content written, some, you know, some lengthy studying, some research, because there's lots I have to do, then that's blocked out in the morning. And then I know when I can put my coaching clients in, you know, just after lunch. So mm. I've managed to work it around my diary and also just take making sure that the, the day when I do certain things. So I try to keep coaching between sort of Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I've got my Calendly link open and I've structured my diet. Trust me, it's taken me a year, I would say a really mm. good year, to find out how that works. Because like Gemma, I then get, I'm involved in other projects. I'm on the radio show, you know, I've got my, my own CIC, you know, I do a lot of speaking and, and events. So for me, it's making sure that I've, I've found that way in my diary. And for me, that, that works. So I don't feel like I'm fighting against my own energy. Because if you said to me, I do get up early. So if you said to me at four o'clock, start writing, I'd be, no, I'm off to sleep. It just wouldn't work. So I do things like my accounts and bookkeeping, all things that are quite, quite routine. So I found that's worked. But it has at four taken... o'clock in the morning? No, four o'clock in the <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> I get up at five. I'm a five like, o'clock. Like, no, I get up at five and then I go to the gym. And then, then when I come back from the gym, mm. then I do all my creative work. Shall we just talk about getting up at five? Okay. Nope. No. My, <laughs> and that's why I wanted. To, that's why I wanted to talk about it. I get up at. No, that's not true. I don't get up at five. <laughs> I wake up at five. <laughs> Very different. <laughs> Two entirely different concepts. But no, I. I'm one of those people who wakes up at five in the morning. It doesn't matter what time I've gone to bed either, which is, I'm here to tell you, a right pain in the bum. Because if I have a night out and I go to bed at midnight, one or two in the morning, guess what? Five o'clock in the morning, I'm awake. But that is the way that I'm wired. And I, I just really, you know, when I see people looking like death warmed up because they're trying somebody or other's morning routine which yeah. involves get up at five in the morning have a cold shower stick pins in your eyes or, <laughs> or whatever else somebody else's routine is like okay, no yeah. you wait what you when you wake up is your wake up time yeah and can i just have a bit of a hurrah here because <laughs> because I don't wake up to an alarm. I'm a businesswoman <laughs> and I'm a businesswoman. I wake up when I want to wake up. Yeah. So that to me is one of the key reasons for actually running my own business. And I, I, some of you may be going, but you're waking up at five o'clock in the morning <laughs> anyway. It doesn't matter. I'm not waking up to an alarm. I wake up when I want to wake up. No, I, again, I wake up at five. It's just the way my yeah, mm, That's just how I'm works. wired. Mm. If you wake up at eight or 10 or 11 or midday, Really seriously, who gives a toss? Mm -hmm. If you run your own business, you structure your business to fit in with how your That's body awesome. rhythm works. And yeah. to, to be fair, and because I'd been, what, 32 years of, of nine to five traveling to the city, to then flip that, you know, and actually work with my body clock, it was, was you mm. know, really... But again, but it took me a year to get out of being entrenched into nine to five mm, mm. it was a really it has taken me I was, actually to be honest i'll say about 18 months mm. to really get out of that and actually say do you know it's my business and i can run it at my yeah. own energy yeah yeah i, I agree I'll yeah yeah why did i get up at five i did try it because mm. everybody was like the 5 a.m club no 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 and no. then i was like this doesn't work for me i'm it's having what? to have a nap at one o'clock yeah. you know but if I, if I get up at five so yeah no it, it's yeah. I, I i think i think there's far too much of of change your habits do this no. do that do do what somebody else says is better that's, that's it do you know what i couldn't articulate you perfectly i people said is it a habit i said no i i've not created any new habits mm. what i've done is listened to my own body that's my that's how my body works my business around my body rather than 32 years of bending out of shape for somebody else yeah i, I find the way that my body works is mm. it wakes up about five o'clock mm. but it's not ready to do anything <laughs> 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 we are not out there okay well, i'm not we're not bounding out of bed like postman pat 
off in the van to chat to people. Oh, no, 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 no. It, it's a cup of tea. It's quietly perhaps making a few notes, listening to a bit of an audio book. I might get up and, and tidy up, actually. I may potter around the kitchen because I'm not ready to work. My brain won't do work, work. It won't think until about 8, 8.30. I can write before then, so I can sit down and, and make notes and think things through. But I'm not doing any serious organising or anything like that. I'm just making a few notes and I'm doing bimbling. And my brain kicks in about eight o'clock. And I can actually feel it happening. And if I, if I decide to force it into doing something beforehand, <laughs> it almost it, it, I can almost feel it rebelling. Um, because I, I tried the five o'clock thing. I mean, I'm up. I'm awake. I might as well do what they say to do, and I'm 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 at the computer, and I'm yay! Off we go. Not happening. Mm. Everyone's different. I mean, I'd much rather. I I tend not to get into work before half nine, sometimes ten, mm. and like having a team, I really struggled with myself with that because I was like, oh, we're not really setting an example if you're telling them to come in for nine. Yeah, but you're not mum. But then I was like, actually, no, oh, it's fine. They know. They yeah. <laughs> they know. They know. I'm not coming in. It's that, mm. But but that, what's the point of you know, when you're the boss? You're not setting. It's not your job to set an example. It's your yeah. job to be the boss yes yeah, so i had to get over that quite swiftly yeah but, but i'm quite happy to work in the if i if there's something i want to do and i want quiet time between 8 and 10 p.m yeah. is my sweet spot mm. for some people that's not theirs but for me yeah. that's my sweet no. spot no 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 and exactly it's finding that that sweet spot yeah because although i get up five did actually sitting down doing client interactions or it's actually 10 o'clock mm. but mm. it's about what i've done my sweet spot is in those, mm. in those five hours yeah i mean i wouldn't do with clients then because mm. that again that's yeah. not my thing but yeah. that's my quiet time where i know that's your time that's, that's, yeah, yeah, that, so that's your quiet time yeah. Or, yeah you know sometimes I find it will kick in Mm. so sometimes I'll I'll, I'll be sat there and and this is one of the things I found if it was a if you set everything to be too rigid Mm. Mm. that actually stuff's happening and you're not listening to it because oh no this isn't when I do that so you know if I've said okay I'm going to have some time off and I may be sat there and suddenly my brain will start thinking through things I'll now go oh actually this is just happening let's just do it and, and it's happening and I'll just, go, I'll just go with it. Whereas before I go, no, it's, it's my, I've regimented it. It's in the diary. I'm to have, you know, one and a half hours time off tonight. Yeah. Um, and so I've got a lot used to listening to what my head and my heart are doing and going, actually, do you know, it's okay. That's what's churning around. Let's get it out and get it done. And I, f- I find that works for me. And I think what we're all talking about here is just doing our own thing, listening to what our bodies and our hearts and our brains are doing and just going, actually, that's okay. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, that's all right because we're in charge. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think another thing is actually not knowing what to do. Yeah. It's not knowing what to do next is sitting there when you've got multiple projects or even one project, it doesn't, one project with a lot of stuff to do, mm. is sitting there and going, okay, I'm going to work on project A. And then it's like, oh, I'll have a look at the, I'll check the emails. I'll, I'll do that or I'll open that or I'll close that or I need to ring this person. And actually not knowing what the next thing is on your list to do. And that could be because you stopped before, you know, so you you last looked at the project the day before or, or whatever and you've left it and now you've come back to it and you, you don't have a flow on from, from where it was. I find that's quite a problem for me. And that if I say, okay, the next thing to do is I need to send an email to Joe to confirm X, Y and Z. Yeah. Mm. And that's so where I've got different projects, I've got a spreadsheet for them and because now I've got to work with somebody else and coordinate then we colour call them so we know where we are because you're right because when you start something you pick it up and think right so I'm planning the, the, an event on the 18th of October so where am I so when I pick up the spreadsheet I can see what, what Natalie's done versus what I'm next to do mm-hmm. otherwise I'll spend the hour I had a lot in yeah, going yeah. right I can't remember where I was looking at it going uh, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. trying to work yeah. out what the next thing is and you have to, to do to be honest what's helped me do that is because I'm actually working with somebody else yeah. when it was on my own but so that mm. having Natalie there and she says, come on, Adele, she can, you know, mm. I like that. And then I can pick it up. If I was on my own, I'd be, oh, I'll do that. Like, you know, mm. that it's accountability. It. Yes, mm. exactly. And also yeah. to be organised. So between the two of us, we know exactly where we are because, mm. we, you know, we're dealing with four or five different projects. We haven't got time to learn. It could take you an hour to work out 
where you were the last time you picked it up. One of the things that I've been using, um, I should have mentioned this at all at some point, shouldn't I, is Reminders, which is a Mac, um, it's an Apple yep. program. It is. And it's, it's, it's complicated enough to be useful, but it's simple <laughs> enough to not get overcomplicated. Because, <laughs> you know, like project managers, oh, yeah. to-do list managers, things like this, where it, it comes up front with tags and this, that and the other. It actually will do all of that. Yeah. It, it's it's yeah, quite it's a good. complex tool, but you can use it really simply and you can move. And anybody who sat out there listening will go, that sounds like any other reminders to-do list thing. It, it sort of is. It's just... I don't know. It's almost like it's stripped back. It's just what you need. I found it's yeah. way too complicated. Yeah, that, and that's the thing. I it it sort it. of does just mm. enough. Mm. It's not a project manager. It's got the principles. That's all you need. Yeah, it's not a project manager. You mm. can't attach spreadsheets and flow charts and all that sort of thing to it. But it does just enough. And if you have one, and it's only for Apple users. So <laughs> so, sorry, folks. <laughs> so, um but it, it is quite simple and it lets you move things around so you can have a reminders list per project and you can just go in there and go, oh, okay, the next thing I have to do is is set up X, Y, and Z. Now you may need some pr- uh, different notes somewhere else, mm. but, you know, to, to what you've actually done and what needs to happen. But at least you've got your what's next starting point mm. yeah. for, for yeah, that. That's good. Can I come back to your accountability thing because I think that's mm. really important. Mm. Um, and so before... I had a team, I had a couple of friends who were also in business doing t- completely different things. And we had like a little accountability WhatsApp group who'd be like, this week I'm going to do this. Nothing's going to happen if you don't. Mm. But they'd just be like, did you do it? Yeah, like <laughs> How mm. did you get on with that? And that mm. quite helped me to, we got to finish that task. Mm. Yeah, mm. I, I think account, accountability is a, is a big thing, isn't it? Mm. Mm. I'm not very good at it, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Keeping people account. Are you good at keeping keep people accountable to you? Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> you just don't like to tell people to tell you what to do. No, no, I I'm not very good at it for myself either. But if I've asked you to do something, I will know what it is that I've asked you to do and when I want it back by. Mm. It doesn't always work like that. Um, but I'm not very good at the accountability thing myself. Um. I find sometimes, and this may this may sort of certainly resonate with Adele is, is I don't like to blame hormones, but you know, I haven't got any, so I've got no, I've got no estrogen. I've got nothing, not nothing, not, not a sausage. Yeah, I am. I am. I'm a husk. I am. I'm a husk. Is, is sometimes it's the confusion. It will be. Around, around stuff. And, you have to find a way of dealing with that. And I know I'm not on my own. There are some women who may have made a decision. I can't, can't understand it, but may have made a decision not to have HRT. <laughs> Go figure. I tell you what, if somebody came in here with a bundle of it and said I could have it, it I, I, I'd snatch their arm off. Um, but and, and please don't tweet in or whatever. It's your, it's your, it's your choice. It's your choice. But if if... You know, if you do have to sort of fly without yeah, without supplementing it's it's e- estrogen, it is. it is, and you have to find a way of yeah. dealing with that. Yeah. Mm. It is, and I boy, and this is exactly right. So I work with women that are up until that point absolutely organised. They've got their all their. Stuff I'm brilliant. To, I tell you what, together. I'm amazing. I'm really clever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really organised. It's, it's just that it's that sometimes that overwhelm can come up, and then just, but. We do find another way of working through it. They have to find a different way after that, especially the ones that can't mm. take some of the other supplements. Then they do struggle more yeah. than women that are on HRT. Yeah, helps. and and there is a su- there are some women like me. I can't even take supplements. No, you can't. I, I, I can't take any. I can't take either the HRT or the supplements because the supplements. Um, I'm a natural way of boosting estrogen. Saying, well, I, yeah, I, I can't. can't I it. can't do that. I have. I'm not allowed yeah, to have yeah. because I've had breast cancer. I'm not allowed to have any estrogen at all. So, yes. Um, and so we use different tools to build more things into the diary. It's just first of all we. Ha- yeah, we ha- yeah. But then you lose the diary. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the, the, and I think there's this hump that you need to go through where. 
people say, okay, you need to get a diary and a to-do list, so you do that. And then you have to, there's this learning curve where you lose them all. And yet I think you have to go through two to three years of losing your to-do list, your diaries, your planners, your computer and everything else and forgetting where you've put it all before you come up with a, before you come up with a system that works. But if you are at that stage in your life or... It, it it could be that you know you've had a hysterectomy or something else has happened where your cognitive abilities are affected. Then you need you are going to be short of time if you don't find if you don't find your own personal way of managing that. And I'm not sure that there's an answer. I'm not sure that there's an off the peg. Mm. Do this and it will work. No. no, and that's why I have created my <laughs> to help women. Just because the amount of women mm. I've worked with over the last eleven years between us as a group we've come up with our own planner mm. for we call it brenda our brain <laughs> it's a postmenopausal mm. way of doing it and that's i even even mm. with that so uh, it's a different way of you have things. to have my my take mm. on this is you have to have a one place one place mm. that you do stuff yeah you have to have something or two actually you have to have something online mm. yeah uh, you have to have somewhere where you can dump online so that if you're going along and you haven't got your plan or you haven't got yeah. your whatever and you come up with an idea, you've got somewhere that you can okay. go, oh, email whatever or do yeah, so and so. That. And then you have to have a planner where you put everything. But but the problem is, and this is how you, where you have to stick with it, is that if you're developing systems, processes, if you've got reminders, to-do lists, or anything that you need to keep it all together, it all has to be in those two places. It all has to yep. be in your online dump or your offline yep. dump, and you have to bring it all together. Yep. So get a box, get a folder, get some way of keeping mm. it all, keeping the whole thing together. Mm. And if you keep it in those in, – in, restricted spaces mm. you tend not to lose it all yeah and we build it exactly the same so i've got i have lists on my phone it's easier but we have follow-up friday so we all sit down i do i sit down for an hour and go right okay where, where's my offline list as in my planner and when i'm out yeah. on the road and i've got my system then what i do by by friday afternoon that's all gone onto the planner i clear the list down for the following week otherwise i was having all these two lists and, mm. and never the twain shall meet you've got to bring them i, I tell together. you what that is the biggest thing is you have to build time in where you bring your brain dumps together. and your plans and your little dots and boxes and mm. TikToks and whatever together <laughs> into one place and and then get them into some sort of order. Because if you don't do that, your brain doesn't trust you. No, it doesn't. Mm. Your brain, if you dump something somewhere, your brain won't will only let go of it if your brain knows mm. that on whatever day you're yeah. going to come together yeah. And consolidate and reorganise that. Yep. If your brain doesn't trust where you've put it, it won't let it go, mm -hmm. and it will keep churning round and round and round. It keep popping up every now mm -hmm. and then. Oh, I've got to do that. Oh, I've got to do that. Mm -hmm. When you put that together with a thousand things that you've collected over the last two years <laughs> of things that you have Helped to down. do <laughs> that keep that keep popping up <laughs> every ten seconds, mm -hmm. that I think that's how we end up with um, a massive confusion yeah, of do. all these things that we have to do. Mm -hmm. Because we we never come together and sort it out. Sometimes when I do that, very rarely actually, which is probably why I'm so so disorganised. But very often when I come and, and write stuff and actually look at what has to be done, half of it doesn't have to be done at all. Oh, so I call it a, a <laughs> yeah. dedupe. Do you know what I do? Delegate um, or delete. And just do it mm. because I realised that I actually I was yeah. panicking. And I actually wrote the same thing down four times during the week. Mm. That's really good because you can clear mm. four things off. But my brain knows by Friday afternoon it's all deduped. I do it, I delegate mm. it, or I, or I, mm. I delete it. You see, when you keep duplicating it, when you keep writing it down again, mm. it's because your brain hasn't let it go. Mm. Because it waits too, yeah. And so... It, it's mm. I, I think really training it mm. and getting it in there it's one o'clock it's friday this is what i'm doing yep. um so that it knows it's so i can let that go it's yeah. safe it's safe yeah i'm going to come back to it i've totally lost where we are now we don't know what to do <laughs> okay where are we you see if we if we planned stuff beforehand we wouldn't have to faff around like this <laughs> so let's come back let's pull it back to the topic the topic is i've got too much to do i think one of the things that's come out of this is have i actually yeah, got have i got too much to do I've just been speaking to everybody oh, have you, i bet everyone's got too much to do yeah and actually have you M measure it because you don't know yeah so 
let's let's tie it together. Have I got too much to do? So I think I quite like my idea. I'm going to do this. I keep saying I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. But but looking at every project and what you actually need to deliver it. Yeah. So if you're saying, okay, I'm going to work with X number of clients and, you know, I'm going to bring on these many clients. Actually, what has to happen with all of those clients? You know, if, if you're if you're at 10, if you if your business model depends on you having 50 clients, you've got 10 at the moment and you haven't got time to go and have a wee without having to combine it with eating a meat mm. pie, mm. then, you know, you're in, you're in, you know, how are you, where are you going to put those other 40 clients? Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Where are they going to Where are they going to go? You can do as much marketing as you mm-hmm. like, but you're not going to bring those. You're not going to bring those other forty clients in because your head's going. You haven't got time for these, love. Mm-hmm. There is no. There, you know. You haven't got time to have a wee. You haven't got time for forty clients. You mm-hmm. can't. Co- you can't cope with the ten you've got. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think mean, sit down. Actually. Have I underestimated the processing time of those clients? Because they don't just arrive, do they? They have to pay for something. They have to be emailed. Appointments have to be set mm-hmm. up. Stuff has to happen. So have you enabled enough time around the client to actually process them? Yeah, or improve that process. That's, that's yeah. the other thing. Like, what can you do better? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah, what can I take? And I think that's the other thing, isn't it? Is very often our processes have sort of evolved over a period of time. And I, I was looking at some of my processes the other day and thinking, and one bit of my head was going, hey, you've got this nailed, haven't you? <laughs> Here it is, it's slick. Mm-hmm. As I wrote the invoice number into four separate places. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I know, but I, I, and I'm thinking, so I've got this invoice number because I very often I'll track things because I have multiple people booking into multiple places. Very often I'll track things on invoice numbers. So these are, the invoice numbers are written into four separate places. That's four places for it to go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> That's four places where that in, invoice number could go wrong. And every time that invoice number is wrong, now what has to happen, you have to try and trace it back to work out, is it the invoice number that's wrong or is it the event that's wrong or is it the person that's wrong? <laughs> so actually, I, I'm now at the stage where my processes are not as slick as I thought they were. They've just evolved. I've bolted things on. I've ended up writing something out four times. It's time to let somebody else have a look at it. Okay, why? Yeah, yeah, challenge. Yeah. challenge, challenge, challenge. challenge. Yeah. We, we like that word, don't mm-hmm. we? That's a good old local government word. Challenge. <laughs> so, You've got somebody new. They're the best new people. Yeah. The best people to you know, the process. Why are you doing that? Yeah. Why are you doing that? You yeah. know, when I asked myself that question, why are you doing <laughs> that? It was... Well, because mm-hmm. <laughs> I've always done it. Yes, <laughs> oh, yeah. you do what you hear. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, it wasn't quite that bad. But it, if it was, I could have sort of laughed at it because <laughs> I'd have known that was wrong. But you know, why? Why are you doing that? You know, does that actually need to be done? Mm. But I don't think I'm the right person to look at it now. If somebody no. else has to come in yeah. and go, what are you actually trying to achieve? And I think that's another question that we mm. need to ask yeah. that perhaps we don't when we're looking at our goal. You know, we're looking at our goals. Yes. I, I don't have enough time. Enough time to do what? Oh, yeah, it was a problem you're trying to fix. It's just coming back to that all the time. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And sometimes, like you said, you know, I had a conversation yesterday. Let's collaborate. It sounded really great. And then I thought to myself, well, what's my plan? I'm doing this. Will that collaboration take me towards my goal? No. So it was, mm. I'm really great. It's a great offer, but it's not for me right now. Mm. Yeah. Um, and you have to turn things down. Mm. You do. Mm. Yeah, you have you have to yeah. say you have to say no. Yeah. But I think sometimes there are things that you can achieve by um I say multiplying a bit like you Adele coming in and doing a workshop inside an event that I'm already running. Yes. Mm. The venue's done. Yeah. The space leverage. is there. I've got the, leverage. the marketing is is sort of set up to it's mm. it's okay to go. It can all bolt in. Yeah. And so you're it's like double bubble, isn't yeah. it? Exactly. So Your one, program's done. And that's a really good example because I came to the event to see you and we went back and we hadn't planned that conversation, had we? No. We'd had the conversation and you said, Have you thought about doing a masterclass? But because I knew it what it is it, it it, it was tr- solving the problem I'm trying to fix. I had all the slides. I had the content. It was a, it was a yes, yes. It was a no-brainer because it fitted. We worked together and it fitted in the vision. So but what perfect. we're doing is using what we've already got. Yeah, we've yeah. cycled it. I've not yeah. got new slides. Yeah. yeah, and I'm I'm not setting up a new venue. No, mm. it's leverage. We're, 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 using, what, we're mm. using what we've already got and actually we're Maximize making the, we're making the best use yeah. of what we've already got. Yeah. 
And that's a collaboration that I said yeah. yesterday. The other one, she wanted it branded, new slides. I was like, whoa, no, 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 that's yeah. not me. I, I couldn't leverage anything I'd got. Mm. Mm. So for me, that's a way, in fact, for both of us, yeah. it's a way of bringing in different clients yeah. and more money yeah, mm. exactly. into yeah. the same place mm. for almost, for not a lot more work. No. Yeah. Um, just using the expertise that we've already got in a, in a just a slightly different yeah. way, and I think that also is the key. Yeah, actually. Mm -hmm. So it's it, what have I got here that I can make better use of that I can use in a different way, perhaps working with somebody mm. that I already know in a mm. different way. Yes. I think that's very different to bringing on a brand new collaboration yeah. and, and a brand do. new thing. Yeah, it didn't work. Yeah, because we already know. Mm. You know, we haven't got to get to know each other. I haven't got to see are our values the same as mine. <laughs> 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 sort of, like, there's there's no risk there. No, the no. risk has already been done. But the speed that we went from a conversation into delivery to date to done that it was, was about fifteen minutes. It was, wasn't it? That was really yeah. fast because, like you said, all the other all the other businessy stuff has been built from a relationship. So I talk to women. That, that example is leverage. It is because the the work of getting to know each other, the work of knowing that we can work together, the work of knowing that we both deliver quality stuff mm. had actually already been done. Mm. Mm. So you're just building on what yeah. you're doing. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I've got too much to do. What are we going to say? Actually, have you got too much to do? Actually, sit down and get yeah. granular. Mm. Sit down, get granular, work out actual numbers. Mm. And have I got too much to do? And really work on that before you take something else on. What's your final tip, Adele, for have I got too much to do? So when you do have that list, then do it, delegate it or dump it. Just be quite strong. Yeah. I like the, the dump it bit. There might be things you don't need to do. Yeah. 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 Are they somebody else's stuff? Yeah. Is it somebody? Is it stuff you don't need to do? Have you come up with it in your head? Is it actually somebody else's crap? Mm. Okay. I think we're going to leave it there. I hope, folks, you've got loads and loads and loads of <laughs> tips. <you're gonna> <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that you, that, that, you that you realise that we here, the three of us talking about it, we're actually. When I tell you what, we're far from perfect. We are really brilliantly qualified <laughs> to talk about this <laughs> subject, and we're talking about accountability. Perhaps you should keep us accountable <laughs> and find out whether we've actually done any of this stuff, folks. We will see you all next week. This is the Women in Business Radio Show. Have a fantastic week. In the meantime. You take care, everybody Bye. out there. Bye. Tune in next week to the Women in Business radio show for more stories, ideas, and inspiration to help you grow your business.